The doctor is in. More than 15 million Americans are dependent on over-the-counter heartburn medications. But what many don't realize is they come with side effects that could land you in the hospital. Dr. Mark Ratner, the chief science officer of Theralogix, joins us now to share his own personal experience and with guidance on how to not rely on those OTC drugs. Welcome to Bloom, doctor. Thank you very much. Nice to be with you. Uh, this is a really important subject because so many people do rely on these medications. And with a new study that says heartburn meds can be used to reduce COVID mortality, that number could double or triple. Um, so what are your thoughts about that? Because now more people will have exposure to them. Sure. So this is a class of medications that's been around for about 20 years. Um, and uh, the most commonly known ones include Prilosec, Nexium, Prevacid. We call these medications PPIs, which stands for proton pump inhibitors. It's a class of medications. And what they do is they basically block stomach acid production. Um, and these medications uh, started off as uh, prescription medications when they were first released uh, in the 90s. And then probably 10, 12 years ago, they became over the counter. Um, and they're generic. And so you can buy uh, what used to be called uh, Prilosec, the brand name now is Omeprazole, the generic, and uh, it's sold in drugstores and, and grocery stores everywhere. Um, so as you said, about 20 million Americans probably roughly are, are taking that uh, type of medication every single day. Um, very common. Yeah, and, and PPIs, like you said, they're taking them almost like they're candy. They take them to, to mask more serious problems. I would suspect they were intended to use to get over a hurdle, not to use on the long term. So can you talk me through how they're helpful and then how they become hurtful? Sure. Uh, you know, for anyone who has a chronic acid reflux, heartburn, uh, which, you know, a, a physician would call GERD, which stands for gastroesophageal reflux disease. That means basically heartburn that you're having like every day. Um, if you've got that uh, and you start taking one of these medications, it's, it feels like a miracle. I mean, honestly, it, it's like somebody has flipped a switch uh, because without the acid in your stomach, um, the symptoms just go away. Um, so they work really well, but you're entirely correct. Um, you shouldn't stay on these medications indefinitely, but especially now because they are uh, available without a prescription, uh, many, many people do. Uh, and I'm actually guilty of that myself. So, um, you know, jokingly, I, I call myself uh, a prisoner of Prilosec. Uh, and the reason is because once you start taking one of these medications, uh, after a few months uh, of your stomach not producing any stomach acid, um, if you then stop the medication, uh, you get a rebound production of stomach acid, which is just horrible. And you develop chest pain and stomach pains and diarrhea, and it's really difficult. Uh, and so most people find it extremely difficult, very challenging to try and stop taking a PPI that they've been taking for a long time. Um, so what happened to me was, um, and this is getting into the, the question that you asked before, one of the side effects that these drugs can have is they block the absorption of key nutrients from the stomach. Uh, and the two key nutrients in this case are magnesium and vitamin B12. So about five, six years ago, I woke up in the middle of the night um, with um, an irregular heartbeat. Uh, I mean, I could tell something was really wrong. Uh, we went to the emergency room uh, and to make a long story short, they gave me some medication and corrected the problem but they discovered that my magnesium level was really low. Uh, and that was probably what had triggered um, this irregular heartbeat. Hmm. And when we looked at where I would have gotten a low magnesium level, it was probably the omeprazole. So doctor, what are people to do? Because you know, weaning off these, if they have that stomach acid is, is so difficult, yet you don't sure. want you know, the side effects that landed you in the hospital. Sure. So the first thing is that, that people should be aware that, that there are diet and lifestyle management techniques that are capable of really reducing the symptoms of acid reflux. Um, and uh, you don't necessarily need to immediately go to uh, one of these medications. Um, uh, although, you know, chronic acid reflux can have some 
some pretty serious consequences. There's a condition called Barrett's esophagus, which can occur uh, for people with chronic reflux, about 15% will develop uh, a condition where there's chronic inflammation in the lower part of the food tube, the esophagus, and doctors call that Barrett's esophagus, which can, mm. in a small percentage of patients, lead to esophageal cancer. Yeah. So this isn't something to trifle with, but um, there are diet and lifestyle techniques, and if you are taking a PPI and you kind of can't get off of it, um, there are some steps you can take, okay. like potentially supplementing B12 and magnesium. Yeah, I was going to ask uh, you if the, if the su supplementation would work. That was going to be my sure. next question. Unfortunately, Dr. Ratner, we're out of time, but this has been so fascinating. And I know, you know, the millions of Americans, a lot of those are probably watching right now, and this has been so helpful. I appreciate you joining us on Bloom. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. And for more information, you can visit ppihelp.org or metformenhelp.org. We'll be back with more Bloom right after this.